Okay, yeah, just welcome back to my channel. So today I have the Xterra again. So I'm at 310,000 miles now. So annoying. So I just actually replaced this headlight. And funny story, I bought the wrong one. I bought it for like a 2008, 2000, you know, the fives and up. So I bought the wrong one. But I'm actually, I do like the clear more than the, redevi the redesigned uh, blacked out ones. So I might go back and do that. I had a deer back in November, so this whole side of the car got repainted. Don't ask me if it's good or bad, because I don't like it. I wanted a new fender, I wanted a new door. I'm at 310,000 miles, and they weren't into that. They said I had to pay out of pocket. And I wanted to do that, but then again, a new door was like 1,200 bucks from Nissan. Probably could have found it for like 1,000 online. And I just wasn't trying to get insurance to pay for half and the other half. And this, it's whatever. I guess I get to keep OEM panels. But other thing I recently redid, bought, actually not redid, I bought these 2016. Um, these are, I mean, they come on the newer Xterras before they got cut in 2015. But these are off of a 2018 Nissan Frontier. The, I think it's an SV. That was weird. So, I got those put on. 535 bucks shipped to my door, so I was happy about that. But this is something I was forgot to point out. So if you see that right there. So a spot, I'm pretty sure it's a spot wheel because I've ground this down once or twice. And this needs to be fixed. I need to put, cut this out, redo it, neutralize the rust. And this is also the same. One except this one cleaned off and there's nothing underneath. This one cleaned off, but then left me with this little hole. It's not even a hole, because I haven't figured out if it could... It doesn't go all the way through, from what I know. I stuck a toothpick in it and touched metal, so... It didn't go all the way through. So, it's probably the worst of the truck, cosmetically, besides the accident damage. But again, I'm OCD. Not OCD, but like, I'm very particular about how I want the paint on the car. Other thing, there's that diff cover that I installed back in, oh gosh, October, end of October. So, looks pretty good. I, I just like this car too much for 310,000 miles to look like this. I mean, it has been all my, my work though. I mean, it takes a lot of work to keep a car as clean as I want to keep it. It's not easy. Look at Obsessed Garage, Matt Mormon, and MONYC, and how they do it. So this is the inside. I'm trying to get... Uh, let me just sit inside now. So I just cleaned some of this off. We got a towel on the ground. That's how you know you're a little crazy. Uh, so right here is probably the worst of the interior, the seat. Obviously it's completely gone, 310,000 miles of a man who's over 250 pounds will do its toll. Thanks, Dad. But I did buy a new seat, never installed it, but bought it about two years ago. So that's my fault. Other thing you might notice, I swapped out the radio again. This time, instead of it being from a Nissan uh, Murano, I went for a Nissan Sentra. I wanted a Nissan Frontier radio, and they have a couple differences, like some of these buttons are over here, some are over there. This isn't the apps one, that's like the 15 and up, or 14 and up. Anyways, it's newer than this one. This one's from 2012 Nissan Sentra, which is funny because this is the 2012 Xterra. It didn't have a touchscreen. It wasn't really an option then. But it's funny, the same wiring harness. There's one feature I did lose. This stuff doesn't light up because one, there's two cables that go into the back of this radio. There's two, and you only have one in this Frontier, in this Xterra. So... That controls some stuff. It doesn't affect any of the options on the radio. It just affects the lighting. I'm sure there's other things that the Sentra has that that wiring harness goes into. I'm just not 100% sure. So, here's the back. Found my phone I've been looking for. Looks pretty good. I think it looks pretty good for 310,000 miles. Especially the outside. Inside, there's not much you can really do to protect it. 
instead of buy seat covers like I did for the Frontier that we got last year in June or May. But those seat covers cost from like, I for, okay, I forget who even made them, but they cost like 250, 250 300 bucks. So they're kind of expensive. But here's the thing though, they cover the seat entirely. And to me, you're gonna avoid that rip. The one thing you might lose still is the foam. But here's the thing though, if you have, the seat is still in really good condition, like the outside of it, and you can just replace the foam. Even if you don't know how to replace the foam, you can take it to someone. And the fact that you still have the material actually still there, then you're in good shape. I wonder if you guys can hear that music. Some people roll around with their music blasting the windows down. It's confusing. But I do that on the highway, but, like, I don't want to do it in public. So, and if you can tell, so I got this out of a 2014 Nissan Frontier. This is also the same faceplate as the 14 and 15 Xterras, except I found this one for, like, 60 bucks. So I'm going to take it. That's a win in my eyes. Also, I got this uh, steering wheel. It's off of a... They said it fits a Frontier, and it fits the Pathfinder. Only issue I had... Oh, it's on this side. So, it has a, the Bluetooth buttons and all that. Slight issue. It doesn't fit, because I don't have the Bluetooth module box that would be underneath this seat in, like, a Frontier of the Pathfinders. Or even, I guess, some of the newer Xterras might have them, too. If you know if the newer Xterras have that, if you just comment that comment that down below if you have a bluetooth module underneath your seat that'd be awesome because i'd love to know that other thing i don't have and i want to try to integrate camera a stock camera and a stock microphone like my dad has in the new in his 2018 frontier pro 4x it has the microphone and there's something else up here but i want to get that too so that uh I can ha answer calls and talk through Bluetooth because, you know, that's what a car should have at this point in 2019. So I want to do that. Also, like I just said, I want a stock camera because I want a backup camera because what car nowadays doesn't have a backup camera? So that's been kind of a bummer. And since my last update video, I've had a couple of slight issues. So... When I press down that clutch, and it's cold outside, it makes a brrrr noise until you let off, and then it stops making the noise. But, I've had that problem since 200,000 miles, so something I really haven't mentioned before, but I just want to know, is that the throw-up bearing? Because I did have this whole clutch, flywheel, pressure plate, pilot bushing, throw-up bearing, all that was all replaced last year. And after the guy fixed it, family friend, family friend pay this guy a lot of good money and that didn't fix the issue so i'm starting to think that it might be the input shaft on the transmission which i'm kind of worried about because that means i have to drop the transmission not too worried because a newer transmission not new but newer because you know at 310 pretty much anything is newer than that you can find them for a decent price i've seen some 600 bucks us dollars and to me, this thing's only worth... No, dude, I took this to CarMax. They said it was worth $1,200. Uh, jokes on... You know, jokes on me. I have way more into that in parts now. But that's... Because I like this truck. So, 600 bucks. Yeah, it's going to hurt. But if that fixes that noise, then I'm down 100% to do that. And that'd be a fun video, dropping the transmission. I feel like it wouldn't be that bad, but on jack stands, it might be a slight issue. But then again, I don't really think so. Because, I mean, I've done engine mounts, the exhaust manifolds. I've done all that stuff without having to need a lift. So, I should be able to do that. The drive shaft, like right here when I'm driving, it's got to be the drive, uh, it's got to be the U-joint on the front drive shaft. Or, it's the U-joint on the front propeller shaft going into the front diff. One of the two of them, or both of them. Are making the dreaded clink 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 noise until you're up to 20 miles an hour and then it stops so that gets really annoying so that needs to be fixed well i need to fix it the diff is leaking from the pinion seal and it's leaking from the axle shaft 
on the driver's side again. And if you know anything about these Xterras, Frontiers, Titans, they always leak because the, to be specific, the manual transmission has the M226 Dana 44 variant axle. And it just seems that Nissan just can't make it properly, and it always seems to leak. I've replaced the shafts both times, but this time I'm looking just to rebuild them. I'm going to buy a shop press for like 120 bucks at Harbor Freight, and I'm going to go at it myself and see what happens. I do have a spare axle shaft from one of the first one. Second one? No, the second one. I'm an idiot. I think I threw one of the shafts out, which I shouldn't have done. Because unless they're bent, you can really you can reuse them. But Nissan wants to sell you a whole shaft for five hundred dollars, and I did that twice because I thought that was the proper way of doing it. It might be, but if they're gonna leak as often as these do after seventy thousand miles, sixty thousand miles, we got sixty and seventy out of the two before they started leaking. Because I had to redo one after we had a shop do it after sixty thousand miles. It's just frustrating. So if I can rebuild it, it only will cost. 150 in total of the first well probably 170 right because the seal and the bearings are like 20 30 bucks together maybe a little bit more at the most 50 bucks so if it only costs 50 dollars to fix the shaft versus 500 just to get a new one i'm just gonna keep doing that because i can rebuild those shafts 10 times before i'm gonna have to buy another sh axle shaft for the same price so i want to do that one question i got if anyone knows if i do the pinion gear do I have to base? Can I just take off the pinion gear if I, I measure the depth? I know they're the, the lash and everything. I know I have to measure all that. But is there a way? Can I just do that? I, I want to know if I can do that safely and replace the seal and put it back because I just want to replace the seals first before I think that the diff needs to be rebuilt or anything like that because it probably does need to be rebuilt at this point. 310,000 miles will kind of do it to a car. Also, I think I might have been ran low on oil a couple times because my dad drove like 100,000 miles with a leaking axle shaft. And I have proof from the dealership when they sold him like $4,000 worth of work and he came home and told me dealerships are ripoffs. I mean, that's kind of true, but like some of the stuff they actually wrote down was legit issues and he just didn't fix it. But don't worry, I ended up fixing it. <laughs> so, <laughs> jokes on him. He had to pay for it anyways. <laughs> Except I gotta learn how to do it, and me learning how to do it is still 10 times cheaper than what a shop costs, so I'm gonna do that. I just need to know if the pinion gear lash will get messed up if I do that, or if it should just... I don't want to rebuild a whole differential, but if it comes down to it, I'd rather learn how to do that now at 22, because I think that'd be another life skill to have, and also... I want to just pull out this transmission because the family friend told me I couldn't do it. I want to prove them wrong because I can. Because I don't think it's really that hard. I'm sure it's hard, but I'm pretty sure I can do it. Oh, okay, so if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, if this is the first time stopping by the channel, don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching. And if you know any of those questions I had down below, please, please leave me a comment. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Bye.